welcome back to Tony North Eastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well um, I quite recently put up a, a look back video it's just a, a montage of photographs um, going back to May uh, May the 16th I think when um, the branch was started and um, yeah, it's it's hard to believe that it's it's been six months since we've started uh, this small project. I didn't think it was going to take as long as it has done. Um, but yeah, we're coming to a point in this build where I can almost see the end of the build if you know what I mean. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, so hopefully in this episode we shall get the roofs on. One, two, three, get them on. And then maybe then we can add the details I want to add. The cornerstones either side of the big main building down this side here, down this edge here, I want to do the same there just to cover up the card joint although it's not too bad the card joints but it will make the building really stand out so let's see how far we get this week here we are back at the bench and I am busy cutting out the apexes. It's going to be quite a shallow roof this. Uh, it only sits 18 millimeters high off the main roof. So it's um yeah quite a shallow roof. Basically you probably won't see it from the ground floor or from the ground. So I'm just cutting these out. It's 74 millimeters wide. Uh, 18 millimeters high. Uh, I need three pieces of these for each side. Um, hopefully the height is just about enough to cover the cables. Um, as you can probably see I've already fitted one of the apexes already and I've had to notch it out um, so we can get the cables past the apex as you can see here and um, also what I'm going to do if I just lift this up slightly I have just marked 4mm from the edge 4mm from the edge I'm going to paint inside there silver so that's going to act like a um, gully if you like for any rainwater so uh, we shall see how that turns out as the build goes on. So we've made this apex which is going to sit behind the chimney. If I could just equal it up like so. So now you get an idea of what the roof may look like. With the trusses in, uh, except the one in 10 down the street, <laughs> sorry <laughs> No, sorry. Um, with the trusses in, we can now concentrate on the roofs. Um, so that's both sides done. Um, I'm going to use the tried and tested method of scoring the card like we've done many, many times before. Before we do that, though, we have to paint the, the gullies inside that gap there where I've left the 4 mil gap. So if I paint them silver to represent lead all the way around, and then we can concentrate on the roofs. For the roofs I've taken a, a few measurements. Um, one across the top from that point to that point which works out at 36 millimeters and I've taken a measurement from where the apex finishes to the top which is 41 so I've doubled that and then I've added a millimetre for the bend um, in the card. So that becomes 83 in total. And then from that point 
to this point I have taken 4 millimeters off and that's become 58 mil so as it says it is quite a small roof and this is what it looks like um, after I've drawn it out on a piece of uh, 1 mil card so what I'm going to do first is score where the fold's going to be because these two sides are going to fold down over um, after I've scored the card so I've just lined up the rule with my pencil mark and then just doing a score and that's it, that's enough um, obviously I don't want to cut it in half <laughs> and then we just score our lines roughly about every two and a half mil and then we'll keep going like that all the way up to the top edge then we'll start from this side and then work our way up and once you've done your lines that way we start putting the tiles in or this way and it's roughly around about every three and a half mil apart or three and a half to four mil apart and you're just pressing firmly with your pen now let me show you an example of a roof that I have done before using this method and here is the roof at South Shields doing exactly the same thing now this is the one mil card I'm using and this is the Medcalf card and um, scored and you can see the difference the texture is a lot different is a lot smoother and that's a lot um, well stone like so this is what it looks like once it's all been scribed now it don't take that long to do not when you've got the radio blasting away listening to Johnny Walker's 1970s pop tunes right so I'm just placing that in there where the corner is I'm just giving it a little mark and I'll do the same here what that'll be that'll be the end of the tiles on the inside in there I don't know if you can see it there so that's where the end of the roof should come so the idea behind that is I'll just put some strips of card uh, in between these trusses or rafters and I'll do the same there mitre them and then run the card that way the idea is then is that this edge here will have something to glue to yeah we should end up with something like this and that just keeps the card at the right height when we come to put all the end section of the tiles on it's quite a steep drop from that point to that point but yeah as you can see I've got this side in and I've put some flaps on this end here ready for the piece of car that goes on here so that's pre-scored folded in and hopefully that should end up at the right height there so what I'm doing now I'm just tr trial fitting this piece of roof section and um, it fits perfectly that way so I just got to trim a little bit off this edge to nothing so roughly about a millimeter to nothing and then that will there uh, fitting there nicely um, I've still got to put the returned edges in to give it something to glue to but yeah we're getting there 
what I find is if you use a screwdriver or something as support for putting in these tabs so you get them close and then just push underneath and then line up the score marks that you've already pre scored on these tabs and then just push up from the underside and just wait for the glue to get a hold and um, that's all these tabs are just a piece of card so we'll leave that under there to dry I won't take on the glove And to finish off these roofs, I'm just placing some capping studs um, across the top and down the sides to hide the joints. And um, basically I'm just using plain card. Um, I've scribed it. Um, it's roughly 4mm squares going that way. Um, and it's only 6mm wide, 6.5 wide. And basically I score it down the center so you can fold it and um, yeah and it finishes it off quite nicely that's already pre-scored as you can see and um, well, that's it it just adds that realism um, scoring it to just press down quite hard with a with a pen and uh, it leaves an impression in the card and it does show up after it's been painted Now that I've finished the two roofs, I'm going to concentrate on the chimney pots. Um, roughly from this drawing that I made oh, a couple of weeks ago. So this is how I'm going to do it. Um, change the di design slightly yet again, and this is the capping stone for the chimney. I've got three holes in there for three chimney pots, and it's. 2 mil card, 1 mil card and then 2 mil on the top. Uh, I've stuck it together and I've used super glue to go around the edges to seal it which will give me a nice crisp edge for when it's painted. So I've drilled it out and the next thing I'm going to do is add some toothpicks. So we're just going to push some toothpicks down into there and then I'll have me chimney pot. And I'm just drilling out the, the card in three places so that the toothpick points can really get stuck into this chimney rest. So I'll soften up the card a little bit. It should go in. That's it, there you go. So that's the chimney pot star. I've just got to glue that in and that will square itself up as I push that home. And so I'll super glue that in place. Put super glue around the edge, a little bit around the base of these toothpicks. Hopefully, we'll get a little bit of play time before it gets glued in home. Nice and tight. Yeah, that's going off already. There he goes. 
so it's well worth keep testing it, trying it, make sure that it fits. There you go. I have now added a brick cornice as you can see it comes from one corner up to the top and then back down again. Um, and I've had uh, a brick cornish along this edge as well. Same with the back. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make up some support stones to go here, here. Um, so I'll we'll need four of them. Um, similar to what it looks like in this photograph. As you can see, I've done the brick cornice there. And just here, you can just make out two supporting stones either side. So that's what we're going to focus on. So I'm going to make two left hands and two right hands. So I'll just fold this piece of paper down the center of my center line. Hopefully that will be smack on in the middle. When it's done, it will go underneath there like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue some half round and some round rodding onto to this side and to this side. So we've got four pieces here. And this is what I'm hoping to achieve. So we've got two mil half round on the top and one mil round underneath. And what we'll do, we'll cut it off at that pin line and then we'll just glue these to the building. So that's what we're looking at doing here. So just a little bit of super glue onto this stone. So as you can see, I'm doing them handed. Just spread that super glue a little bit and just press home. Just let that rest on there. It's just below the pen line. Right, and then we'll just get the mill round and just put it underneath like so and then we'll just cut it off right, hopefully that's all stuck together so it just makes the next one that little bit easier And that's what we should end up with. So what I'll do now is I'll cut them off into four individual stones and we'll stick them to the building. And that's what it looks like in place. It looks like it's supporting that uh, block of bricks. So if we just zoom out you can see other little bits I have been doing. I have brought a course of bricks along that edge, followed it round the front and taken it round to the other side. Um, and if I turn this building round you can see how the back of the building is looking as well. I have now added some stones to the sides here. Now you've seen me do this before, Saracen's Head. This is a, a basically an, an idea taken from Saracen's Head to put here. 
and that's what's going to happen around the front. It's going to come down this edge and then all the way down this edge. But before it reaches the bottom of this edge, I want to create a stone plinth all the way around. Doing something similar to what I've done there. But what I might do, I might put the two mil half round on the bottom and have the one mil round on the top so it mirrors that um, well gable stone if you like I've thrown a few ideas around and um, I've come up with this more or less the exact opposite of what I've done for supporting the brickwork I'm just using a little tiny bit of super glue there to join half round and full round together. Just take some of that glue off. A little bit too much on there. So I've glued that in. And where I've marked it here, for the other side of the window, I'll put a tiny bit of super glue there as well. And what I'll do is I'll cut between those two marks and remove the one mil round, just leaving the two mil round. And you'll see why in a minute. And that's what it looks like in place. Um, you can see the one mil round there, and that's the two mil half round. And it's it's in keeping with what we've done already with the main window frame and the canopy there, where I've used the two mil round. Um, so yeah, it don't look out of place and that sort of finishes that off. That's virtually the front done apart from the edging stones which I haven't put on yet. Now we're going to focus on the main roof itself. Um, I'm going to have to put some additional supports on the inside because I want to keep this edge for the capping stones like we have in the photograph. So what I want to do is widening the walls a little bit by adding some more 2 mil card and then let the roof sit on those exposing this edge. This is what the roof is going to look like. Um, as with the photograph it's not quite in the middle this um, skylight as it were so it's, it's roughly just below the apex of the roof and I think once that's folded um, it'll be a, a good way to see what's inside so yeah so that's the, the plan for that um, so yeah so I've centralized it that way come down 5 mil and uh, 18 mil centers and uh, yeah so I'll just cut that out and then what I'll do then is I shall score the lines for the tiles um, like we did here and just make that on the top right hand corner that's what I've done there so I'll do that and then that's ready to um, or it will be ready to have the glazing feared well so that's all the scribing done um, it took a while to do but yeah that that'll, hopefully that should look uh, quite neat when it's painted um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, two skylights, roughly the same either side. Um, smack in the middle there. Um, on the other side, I have added two pieces of card here. That's so that when it comes to gluing on the roof, it's got a little ledge to sit on that edge there. And hopefully with the glue being trapped in that edge, it'll give us a good bonding for the roof to um, settle in, as it were. And we've got our 
three mil overhang there. So yeah, so that's almost on there. Um, the next thing to do is to glue some card to create a lip on the inside. Um, can't, I don't know if you can quite make it out, but if I glue a bit of card on the back, it creates a lip. That lip on there, in there, um, is for the glass to sit in. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just um, preparing for the glazing. Um, it's easier to do this when it's um, all in bits. I'm just focus on just half and half. Just kind of mark the centre of that piece of card. It's only a tiny lip I need, a millimetre of that. And uh, yeah, just glue that on there, all the way around, and that's ready for the glazing. With the new additional features that we've added to the building this week, um, it's beginning to look more and more like a station um, with the chimney breasts and the chimney pots being added, the window lintels, the corner stones, the support stones that we've added here and the brickwork that runs on this edge. It's, um, yeah, it's taken on a whole new look. And it probably take me now a couple more weeks just to finish off because uh, there's the capping stones to add here and all around this wall and there's the guttering and drain pipes and also the glazing of this main roof. Now you're pro probably wondering has he or hasn't he? painted the ceiling again. Well, I'm going to leave you pondering on that thought. So yeah, we've come a long way this week. I bet you thought that was going to be the end of the video. I'm afraid not. No, it's competition time. We had such a great success with Grab a Mug competition last year with over 150 entrants I thought I'd bring it back this year so I'm giving away three mugs but the first prize will get an addition prize or the first winner drawn will get an addition prize and this is it it's a trains a complete history it's not just any book this book contains 50 locomotives you can make um, it's, it's ideal for um, your son grandson or nephew it's basically a little encouragement to bring somebody into the hobby so this will be a, you know a great present for a, a youngster if you were so yeah so the winner will not only get a mug but this book and then the two winners up We'll just get a mug each, but yeah, I think this is a great prize. I think it's a brilliant little book. So, in order to win the mugs, uh, it's a very straightforward question. How many pubs is on this layout? If you can name them, brilliant. But the answers have got to be in by no later than next Friday and the video will be posted up on the Saturday with the results so there you go how many pubs have I got here on the northeastern right I think I've earned my cup of tea this week until next week Stay safe everybody, bye for now, bye.